we will go ahead and it has been a little bit since we played uh, almost a month i think so we will go ahead and do yeah, a am I again? recap <laughs> yeah um so you're kilton oh that's right and i'm casper <laughs> I think I'm and you all get along so well <laughs> This and is, we, sh- uh, and we share all chemical ingredients with no fighting and fuss whatsoever. That's actually true. We are very, we are, it's despite everything, Casper We're- and Mare are incredibly democratic when it comes to alchemy. They know they have to be, right? Mm-hmm. Like, co special interest ass. The vibe instantly ends as soon as they're not. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're not doing that here. We are not. Last time that we played, the group had arrived at the distant fortress of Ker Saren, where they rendezvoused with Lucian, a griffin witcher that is known to Casper. Lucian detailed a mission that involved resolving some missing food, a delivery that had not shown up for the griffin witchers. He suggested that success in this would foster trust and collaboration with the other witchers in the fortress. The group's journey then took them northward towards an unexpected turn where a pack of wolves began stalking them. Casper bought some time for the group by a well-placed Igni, but the confrontation ensued on the banks of Lake Hankred. The warg leader, however, was deftly handled by Kilton, who skillfully dispatched it with a sniper headshot from the top of a tree. Very impressive. Mission status sick. (laughs) Yeah, really. Yeah, that was the fucking I actually got it from the moon. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, it's not sick anymore because you didn't get it from the moon. you, uh, You then continued around the lake and found the remnants of a scorched cabin and you uncovered the tragic fate of a family that had been trapped in the basement. As you entered into the village, an unsettling quiet hung in the air, but the group was met by the few remaining locals that were here in the village. A revelation during the evening hours unveiled that Henrik, one of the hunters, was in fact the arsonist responsible for this devastating fire. In this recovered journal that Casper found, it revealed a tale of stolen food and unintended tragedy, as Henrik, who was facing the harsh winter conditions, believed that the family had left to go foraging and set the fire to conceal his theft. Unbeknownst to him, they had been in the basement, and Henrik, through his journal, had seemed distraught. In his writings, complaining of strange and intensifying stomach pains. And Casper was able to deduce that Henrik was likely in some way cursed. And that is where we had left off in the small fishing village. It's always a curse. I don't know nothing about breaking curses. Uh, <clears throat> fucking curse him. Got him. Curse, curse him if you got him. Curse him if you got him. Curse him if you got him. All right, the group find yourself here having finished up dinner with Henrik. Mara and Kilton, you are both kind of in the small dining room area where Henrik is entertaining you. He had just sent his young daughter, Hilda, to bed after they you'd all finished up supper. And uh, Asper is snooping in the, the main entryway or the other room. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're distra- we're distracting Heinrich so Casper can finish his snooping. Uh, I finished. I killed it. I killed the snooping game. You kill. You fucking killed it. De- killed it. It's dead. It's buried. It's Just in the like ground. This guy killed funeral. that family. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I mean, you did it probably faster and more well informed. Yeah. Uh, and okay. with no loss of life. Let's play a game called How Would Casper Handle This Situation? Hopefully Is it, it empathetically will. and calmly? Hopefully it's in a way that doesn't get all of us killed. Or kicked out of here. Hopefully. But you do you, boo. I mean, what is, what is the town? Like, 
I mean, like they're giving us a, a a place to sleep. One guy and a grandma. Yeah, you gonna kill the grandma? I'm not gonna kill the grandma. Uh, cool. Then we're, we can't kill everyone in town. No, I, I'm not gonna kill. I'm not gonna kill everyone in town. I might not even kill this guy. <laughs> I know I kind of set that up accidentally, but quote of the episode already. <laughs> I'm not gonna kill everyone in town. <laughs> I feel like that could be the quote of every episode. I think yeah. if every time Casper goes into a town. Like, into a town. <laughs> every time oh, Casper wakes up, I'm not going to kill everyone in town. I'm beautiful. He ends up killing someone in I'm town. wonderful. <laughs> Look, okay. If somebody gets emulated. Passive. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not excusing myself from this. I don't, I don't who's, excuse myself from blame. Oh, no, I'm talking about me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I. Uh, this is what uh, that, was, the... that was pre. That was pre uh, recording. Is that I yes. set a guy super on this fire? Is, uh, what we in the business world call the passive voice. It's good for PR. You just say someone gets immolated, and we are deeply remorseful. We're deeply, sa- we're deeply sad and remorseful by by the, the person by the, the sudden immolated. immolation of a person. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Never uh, let them know you're doing people's... the immolating. Uh, war crime uh, pep talks with Kilton. Oh God. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yes, the evening uh, grows a bit late. You finish up your supper here, Casper. Do you retain the journal, or do you place it back into the kind of cubby drawer that you found it? Uh, I'm gonna be a shitty little sneak, and I'm gonna put it back. Nice. Good call. Buy us a little bit of time. All right. Uh, I'm going to saunter over. You guys are having a nice little conversation. And I'm just going to look at you guys at my party. And I'm just going to say. I'm going back to our quarters. Okay. I need to have a word with both of you all of you as soon as you're done here all right henrik kind of leans back in the chair as you enter into the room and goes yes i think that would be best it is getting late and uh well i must be up early in the morning but uh, myself and yanar would be happy to answer any of your further questions in the morning i hope that the longhouse is to your liking and is comfortable it very much is. Thank you again for your hospitality and sharing your meal with us. Let's let this man get to bed, everyone. Gigi. Excuse me. That's actually the noise the guy makes in response. That's, that's, Cas- that's <laughs> Casper. <laughs> he has a cat that's wandering around underneath the table. He'll Master keep cat. the mice down. We give it a scratch if it lets me. Yeah, it's a friendly, it's kind of like a one of those mangy barn cat type I'm so cabbies. sorry about that. Oh, yeah. R- Removed. Oh, big, fluffy winter winter coat cat. Mm-hmm. Are we talking about Casper? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he, no, he's got a short-haired yeah. orange tabby. We know. Uh, Henrik's cat spawned cons- uh, uh, such a very overweight, like, it. orange cat, and it just, like, kind of, like, sits on his table and <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just eats. It eats. It has a very uh, sarcastic lasagna. look forage, about it. That forage yeah. some lasagna from the frozen woods. Oh yeah. my god! Some wild for wild forage. Lasagna. That's why they don't have any food. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the beast. Though. That's the beast that you've been sent. To hunt. <laughs> a fucking. That's, that's cat. the beast that ate the witcher's food. Is fucking Garfield. <laughs> that's <so funny. laughs> I would love to homebrew like a horrible witcher monster that l- vaguely looks like Garfield, like those weird realistic realistic cartoon oh, characters God. that cropped up a few years ago. Oh, yeah. No. I bet you could make that an AI so quickly. Thankfully, uh, you're an artist and you could just draw it. Air fuse. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Uh, I'll, draw, I'll draw a fucked up cat. Yeah, me I mean, too. I could, yeah. I've drawn Garfield monstrosities many a time. I literally drew Garfield as the head from, uh, from uh, the thing when the head turns falls oh, off yeah. the guy's body and then has spider oh legs. I drew God. that, but Garfield <laughs> <laughs> old ones. 
All right, All right Ophia we Heinrich is going and his, to... uh, his fat, fat cat alone. Yes. He's either a very good mouse or a very poor mouser. He's very spoiled. I like to think it's actually one of those fucking weird, you know, those giant fuck off cats. Oh, the uh, main, coo- main coons. No, like there's another one. Norwegian like forest cat. cat. Yeah. The Norwegian forest cat. Not as big as a main coon, but pretty big. Yeah. Not as big as a main coon, but they look more inti- They look much more intimidating. Welcome to this week's episode of Which Cat Is Bigger, <laughs> where we uh, dig into which cat is bigger. Oops, uh, it's Casper. Okay, Casper is wow. the biggest. That, thanks. Cat. The episode's over. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> I spoiled. I spoiled the season. The spoiled the finale. ending. Gra- Where's the gra- series gra- finale? We're get canceled on Reddit now. <laughs> gonna get canceled on Good Reddit, more. Lily. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I got banned from Twitter for saying what uh cat no, is the largest. No, no, no. Uh, Alright, what do you all do when you get back to the I was gonna house? Say the is, original tweet. It is nice and warm in here, and uh you have it's probably ten o'clock or so in the evening, quite cold out, probably you know, negative fifteen out or something like that. In oh Fahrenheit. god. Well, I'm gonna sleep on this one then. Oh my god. There has to be a window right there. Fine, I'll go here. So, oh, I don't have a British accent. Uh, so, uh, I figured out something. Casper? Who are you? What are you doing in this long house? <laughs> focus, focus. This <laughs> is Detective uh, Casper. He has a different accent. <laughs> yeah, he has a little bubble pipe. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so... Oh. I don't like the characterization on the BBC Casper. <laughs> uh, he's so autistic coded, but the actor that plays him is so ableist. Um, uh, Casper says, so it turns, looks like we're dealing with a curse of some sort based around uh, what's that guy's name again? Heinrich. Henrik. Heinrich. Heinrich. Based Henrik. Henrik. Sorry. I was like, I know it was not Henrik. a Heinrich. <laughs> Based around Henrik. Uh, also, you would be pleased to find out that I also sur- solved the uh, the murder of the family in the cabin back there. Oh, damn! Did you find the monster too? Or uh, well, my working theory right now is. Henrik is the monster. Wow. Some sort of transformation or something taking over. Well. Do, do you think he was always the monster or this curse has bestowed monstrosity upon him? If I had to guess the latter, though, can I do a Witcher training check to see if I know for sure, Mr. DM? Can I sure, also do absolutely. a magic training check to see if the, this, these kinds of curses are uh, a known phenomenon? Absolutely. Rolling. Phenomena. Oh, reset your luck, everyone. Oh, thank you. Oh, fuck. I was going to add luck to that. Still pretty good. Okay, well, I forgot. I'll save it for later. That's on okay. me. Hold a two. Goddamn. <laughs> Kilton, getting into I my pajamas. Also a two. Getting yourself ready for getting bed. Ready for bed. <laughs> yeah, brush get, the teeth and floss. And, getting yeah. his jammy, getting his yeah. jammies on. Doing his, doing his, on. doing his, re- doing his retinol. Oh, I know, Just I know. His ass is wearing like a a Scrooge. Uh, oh, you know, okay, nightgown. Anyway. We already talked about this. He has a nightcap <laughs> and a nightgown. Yes, of course. It's canon. Thought that was we were talking about a uh, dandelion there. No, they have matching ones. Yeah. Well, the the colors don't match, but the styles match. Yeah, they anyway. bought it from the same retailer. It's just a different color. Don't let oh me God. retailer. Ugh. I suppose. Don't let yes, me Mare with a nineteen on your magical training. Your magical training probably doesn't cover, you know, monsters and uh, curses quite as extensively, maybe as the Witcher training might. But you've definitely read about and have studied. It in quite some detail. Mara, you would know that curses are often triggered when horrible things happen. Uh, it can mean that 
a soul can kind of be trapped or turned into something else. It can mean that uh, someone can be burdened with some sort of element that will uh, linger with them until certain they got the fucking, parameters are met. They got the fucking ick stuck to them. They got the exactly. Ick. The uh, slightly higher Witcher training would tell you, Casper, I don't know, do you think Casper has ever faced any cursed ones before? Um, um well, it's kind of hard to say. I'm, I feel like Casper is incredibly well versed on like monster theory. So he's very like he knows a lot about monsters, but he's also not that old as far as like witchers go. Like he's still a greenhorn. And he's spent so much of his last 10, 20 years in a city. So I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say he knows of, but has never seen one. Okay. Yeah, so in that case, you've definitely heard of instances uh of similar circumstance where tragic or violent death um, often at the hands of another will result in someone becoming kind of linked in some way to the soul of that person or linked in some way to that tragedy. In this particular case, your training would suggest that Henrik's action in some way cursed him and has essentially linked him in some way to this event. Now, you haven't got a chance to necessarily investigate too much, so it's hard to say really like how this curse is playing out. The things that stood out to you from the journal that you were able to investigate briefly was uh, the mention of the kind of bodily changes that were happening to Henrik. He noted that his kind of stomach pains were growing worse and worse, and he had mentioned that there was some sort of like... Uh, change happening in his body beyond that though uh you don't necessarily have a ton of evidence to concretely figure out what this curse might be except that it's yeah linked in some way to this mm. event. Mm. especially since it was is there anything his, else you were trying because 25 is quite high by... is there anything else you were trying to determine specifically would the curse affect anyone else tangential in what way do you is there evidence like is there a history is there a history of like i mean there there's in the books but that's not like a curse of uh the dad uh the, the king fucks his sister and then they have a kid but the kid ends up is the cursed one um but like, yeah that's that's a great it, example yeah so it, i just want to eliminate the affect... possibility that this is like the not just the perpetrator is that uh so yeah i want to make sure it's not the daughter <laughs> so yeah. people don't the, yes, or so curses can indeed affect him, other people, and they can affect them in interesting ways. So it doesn't necessarily, because Henrik might be the cursed, like be cursed, doesn't necessarily mean that it is him alone. It could be, it can often affect other people. Wonderful. Uh... I wonder if the curse is especially potent because it was, the murder was enacted if, via feelings of desperation and hunger and fear of starvation. It's very, pri it's very, very primal. It's very primal, primal fear. Hunger is the strongest. The strongest motivator is also what binds us to animals. It's someone who's almost starved to death at least on two occasions uh one of the most horrible feelings imaginable yes not a fan not a fan i uh brush my teeth some more <laughs> you're, you're flossing definitely uh not ideal ah well <sighs> 
What kind of monster could he be turning into if he's even turning into a monster? Uh. I know stupidly little about curses. Casper, <laughs> you had uh. just learned about or remembered some stuff that you knew about curses and yes, that's where we were. So, and uh, I asked uh, if the curse would be made more potent and powerful because it was motivated by hunger and desperation and fear. Yeah, uh, yeah Mari, your training actually would also probably help uh, help you remember things that are related to that. And you would know that oftentimes curses are kind of dark reflections of what caused them in real life. And so... Yes, I mean, definitely something like that could be a an element of it. Mm -hmm. The spite of the, the anger of the family that was killed, the guilt of the person who unwittingly murdered a whole family over food, God, and the God. hunger that and the hunger and jealousy and desperation that led to the whole altercation in the first place. Very yeah. potent, very nasty stuff. So the question is, what do we do? about it. I don't think do you think this is the monster that's keeping the food from being delivered? Hmm. If he is Hungry. even is a monster. Hungry. Hungry. That's keeps food from, you know, like a guy who steals DoorDash deliveries just really hungry. Well, we can deal with it or we can have the other witchers we can tell them of it. They will figure out a way to deal with it. Probably it really depends. I don't. Uh, do you think the Griffins will be more or less delicate than you are willing to be? On the other hand, do you think you'd rather get the money or them? I do not see this paying. Do you think they'll even do it if it's not paying? <laughs> It's a matter of survival for them. Of course, they would do it without paying. All right. Do you think they'll pay for it? I want you to think long and hard about what you know about witchers. The Is food, money food association. Money. Yes, they are poor. Yes. But you are poor and you pay money for food sometimes when they're not eating like horse meat or something. But if altogether they can draw up a collection of something and say thank you for letting our food supply come through then they're paying the payment we're getting for bringing the food supply is access to the library oh yes right. this is already a job sorry <laughs> no, yes. no, mo no money to be gained here well we can't pawn it off on them then no but I want to make sure we're doing if we are rectifying something I'm Rather, we use a scalpel instead of a hammer to be what about clinical a about it. Crossbow. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that I happen to be a hammer. Can I ask you to postpone being a hammer for at least another day? Plus, even a hammer has the other side. You know the. It, uh, you you know what I'm talking about. The pry. The claws. Pry. No, it's like the... Yeah, yeah. I... That'll do it. I feel for the child. I do not wish any harm to come of her, but if her father does turn out to be the monster, I truly believe that it would be best to put him down. What if we could break the curse, though? It no wouldn't be better... Yeah. Wouldn't it be better to restore him to his humanity so he can continue being a father for his child out in this godforsaken snowy wasteland. Would I know if there's a way to break a curse? All curses can yeah. be broken. That How to break a curse? Got it. <laughs> oh. All curses can oh, be broken. Oh, yeah. That, some of them are just yeah, so impossibly how? hard to break that, but yeah. generally, it, as it's understood, <laughs> a curse can be broken under the right conditions, but it's, it's just yeah. many of the many of the conditions are so complicated and hard that uh, it's or painful that it's easier to put them out of their misery. But I'm not sure what can, what kind of case we're looking at here. This could be as simple as 
offering restitution to the spirits or could be an exorcism could be god i wish we had a priest uh i was gonna say i could stand in but not in this kind of thing only in peacetime as it were (laughs) it would be easier to have him own up to what he's been experiencing so that way we can offer our posit ourselves as helpers we go in there i'll uh inquisition style he's not going to be rece- he's, go- he's not going to be receptive there's no guarantee he'll be receptive if we tell him he's cursed that's what i mean we want him deny we, it and kick us out of the we want him to tell no. us we want him to be so desperate that and see these us as outsiders as harbingers of knowledge that could potentially save his life we want him to see us as indispensable what you need don't... is a salesman a witcher and a witch who can't cure a curse with the two of them we are in a witcher a witcher a witch and a druid yes oh sorry she's gone to sleep i forgot uh (laughs) she's got her eye mask on there's no guarantee Me too, but i'm still having the conversation (laughs) there's no guarantee that we'll be able to lift the curse it might it more than likely i will say come down to killing the man so? I'd rather not let that be our first option, though. You know, even if uh, we know there's no guarantee, but we're convincing him it's close to a guarantee. So a lie. desperate man doesn't need a guarantee. He needs a chance. And if we fuck up and kill him, what's he gonna do? Sue us? There's enough orphans in this world already. I'd rather not make, make one more. Sure, sure. And he had the good sense to burn the house down, children and all. No orphans. <laughs> I'm just saying, we'll try our best, and I'll convince him it's a, as good as sure a shot. I think... And if we fail, and he freaks out on us and turns into some Leopluridon or something, then we'll uh, off him. I don't have any basis for this. It's just a intuition hunch. I think the old woman knows more than she is letting on. That's true of most old women. I think she knows more specifically about what's going on. What she, she needs is not very perturbed that their biggest customer, as far as food, has not been satisfied. Yeah, come to think of it, as the town I elder, know, as the town elder, you think she'd be more concerned about that. If my shipments were getting cut off, I'd be pissed. So I think there's a couple more aspects to investigate here before we go all hammer. In the, the morning. time being, though, I think that I should guard the door Absolutely. and monitor monitor any changes that could arise. And if you see something sneaking out in the middle of the night to do monsterly monsterly things. Take some notes. Or wake or wake better yet, wake me up so I can take notes. Uh in the fire, are there any like coals? Like any like low burning like red hot coals? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a nice roaring fire. You got it going earlier and it's well stocked. I'm going, and I'm guessing there's like all the stuff to tend to a fire in the building. Yeah. I, no. uh, I'm going to use pliers to um, hoist myself out like a little coal to keep myself slightly warm. Bless you. It's been tight. <laughs> For as long as it burns, at least. So you're going outside or? <laughs> yeah, I th- I'm going to try and camp outside of his house. Oh, okay. Sure. To like keep an eye on him because I have the meditation thing right. now. Do you want the tent just to keep the wind off of you? I suppose I can make the lean to. Though I don't want uh, anything my too tent big. is small, not like Kilton's. Oh, that's right, we don't have that anymore. Why would you say it like that? <laughs> you knew that. <laughs> you knew that. I did know that. Oh, lean to. I'll loan Casper my 
the canvas uh, of my tent so he can make a buffalo lean too. Wait, that's, I have a tent. That's right. I have a we tent. Now. You a tent. I bought a tent. I have a tent. Okay, now. Use your tent. I'm going to use that. Leave, leave mine alone. All right. All right. So, Casper, I bought a new tent also. <laughs> did we? Did you? I did. I used all of my yeah. money. I have. Oh, that's right. We did go to a town. We, really we did go to a town after the I, we, we literally I had this conversation. I forgot. It's been a month, dude. I was I've had to other like, things in my mind than your tent. I was literally getting ready it's to stitch February. some of these bed sheets together. <laughs> so lucky you. I. Uh... Oh yeah. Hey, Casper, where are you setting up? Uh, uh, I'm going to set up. I will put myself there. Ooh. All right, the biting cold right, hits you as soon as you exit. Uh, it's snowing out. It's, you know, blizzard, like negative 15 degrees out. Very cold, Fahrenheit. northern. Uh, hmm? Fahrenheit? Yeah. All right, Casper, go ahead and give us an endurance check while you're out here in the freezing yeah. cold. And yeah. then That's the rest the of you oh. are able to settle in. I was trying to put it off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what what is that even under uh, body? Of course. I'm actually I'm gonna, gonna sleep put... closer to the door if Casper is gonna come and wake me up if he's doing some sus oh, shit. Oh yeah, nice. Casper, the cold doesn't bother you too much. I do love that you're just set up in it, like the bush out front of his house. <laughs> like, yeah, I straight up like am halfway in the bush. I've like r- r- canvas wrapped around my body, like. Uh, uh, emergency blanket style. You're in a hunting blind, but it's a really, it's really bad hunting blind. <laughs> it sucks so bad. It's this it's is a- the only place where it's like kind of blocked from the wind, at least from one yeah. direction, like one and a half directions. <laughs> the, so, like, yeah, the, just- the 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 rural village deer hunter. <laughs> if you are in a cold situation, you want to put yourself in a away corner from, away from the wind. So the wind doesn't hit you as bad. Because the, uh, the wind is what's going to kill you. The wind is what's going to kill you. Uh, That's why I buy the fucking fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> buy the well, door excuse me for being thorough. I don't want this guy coming out and killing us in our sleep. Unless That's... it turns out to be Granny. In which case, funniest option. <laughs> Let let her do it. Honestly. Let her grandma werewolf. Bye. Bye. That's been nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> go back to the witches. Couldn't figure it out. Sorry. <laughs> funny how, funny how you're, Granny. <laughs> funny how you're thinking werewolf. I'm thinking something entirely different, but I don't know if it exists. In the uh, I, I just use werewolf as thinking. like a general like as like a general like idea of a curse. I don't really know what it is. I've been imagining um, a Loch Ness monster ass monster, so I said Leah Pluridon ass monster but i, was I should not i should not like say a, the name uh, of the thing that i'm thinking of uh floridon nope starts with starts with the w uh, cannot say it or else you invoke it leah floridon that would be that's not i mean there's also uh oh god there's like a specific there's like whites uh i don't remember if that's if in this one it's like a curse. Anyway, that's not important. Hey, guess what? I have meditation now. Uh, Witcher can nice. enter a meditative trance, which grants all of the benefits of sleeping, but allows them to remain vigilant. While meditation while meditating, a witcher is considered awake for the purposes of notice- noticing anything with a <laughs> double their meditation value in meters. It's not very much. It's only four meters, but specifically that's why I'm by the door. Not a big house. <laughs> And you're, yeah. you know, in the corner by the front door and also kind of by his window. And so you'd be able That's to... That's a small house, yeah. And so throughout the night, you can kind of hear through the, the walls of his cabin aren't super thick or anything. You can hear him kind of shifting, you know, tossing and turning a little bit, starting to snore a little bit in the early morning hours. And um, yeah, the rest of you are able to drift off to sleep. Ophea unfortunately fails her resist coercion check for another no. night's sleep. He is how is she doing on to... how is she doing on stamina? She, she oh, she's can't recover. fine. She hasn't oh, wait, used a lot since uh, the last Ophea, time. Didn't Ophea uh, specifically ask to tend the fire for Granny so that Oh, that's right. That so she didn't have to sleep. Yes. Let's Still see. have to sleep though. I guess regardless, it's the same outcome. 
So, Ophea will actually... That's why Ophea has been so quiet the whole time. Because uh, she's been off tending to the fire. So Fire watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's a big bonfire out. I thought that... I didn't know that's what the job I wish, was. I wish Declan was here so we could get some insight into Granny. This kind of reminds me of like yeah. an episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. How so? Uh, specifically the the scary one <laughs> with the old woman that blood bends. Oh, uh, yeah. Dope. All right, the, the night passes. You all are able to drift off in the early morning. Ophea will come in and get some rest as well and sun rises on a new day Uh, all right before before uh the guy wakes i'm going to peace out and go back kind of like just get away from his house so it doesn't look super creepy come come inside and warm up (laughs) oh god it's so fucking cold can I try to like gussy up to make my sales pitches better with grooming and can... style? I can help you yeah. with that. It was like a joke, but now I'm like, if I just show up and look like a real bad bitch, is this gonna like help me I, at all? I'm gonna some... get your your ass and tits done. I have I have training in no. grooming and style. Can I help him? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you my mustache. got yeah, the impression, well, Kilton, well, that there's there's not a lot of commerce to be had here, but you can definitely get. Oh no, I'm not and... selling stuff. I'm selling the idea that we can help them. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you get your, your finest. You know, we don't want if he's a werewolf on. or a Leoplurodon or whatever. We I don't trim want your, to I trim your mustache so it's, and... so it's not crooked. Uh, I trim your nose hairs. I want to look like a trustworthy no. person because I'm not, but I want to look like a trustworthy give him a little, person. Give him... <laughs> That's actually the quote of the episode. <laughs> I, I want to look like a uh, trustworthy, look trustworthy person because I'm not. Clean up, clean up the edges. What is uh, it with help? Two or three? In this case, I'll say it's a, a. Mari, what's your bonus to it? One. Uh, one. Okay. Uh, I'll say just I, an I, extra, extra. Add a one. Yeah, I'll say for that. Usually, it's kind of a depending on I'm how not, good. I'm not used to. I'm not used to nice. making up men. <laughs> you, <laughs> There's not a lot to work with pearls. here, too. You know, it's it's a little yeah. sparse. So the have, materials. I have, you know, I have my makeup, <laughs> yeah. but it's my makeup. Rude. <laughs> Fucking my rude. Makeup. Uh, you know, like that song, Wake Up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All we have here is a brush and a little makeup. We have to live with it. <laughs> it's true. Grooming and, style- and styling is a required skill for mages when they start. They have to take at least one point note. Yeah, you know, I didn't start out as a <laughs> as a uh, merchant, so I hadn't thought of it. You know, that makes sense. I always wondered why mages are the most vain people imaginable. <sighs> oh, you're so There's close. There, this, Just I, replace I, the I have, I have at the end. Several, and... several things I could say to that, but um, I don't think you've, you're in the, the headspace or the level of maturity to accept them, so. Oh no, that sounds like that's what you had to say to him. No, I want to say that's fucking misogynistic, but... <laughs> He said I mages. Meant, oh. He never said sorceresses. Yeah. It's, no, but I, I, I heard I, I heard what you said. I heard what you it's said. It's just a, a bigoted generalization. It's not a misogynistic bigoted generalization. It's an equal bigoted misogynistic generalization. Hang on. I think I'm lost. Anyway, my mustache smells fantastic. Said, Thank he you He said that. mage. I know he meant sorceress. I said mage, and I meant mage. Sure. Yes, have you ever met another mage? Male mages will usually uh, flaunt their vanity by wearing exorbitant clothing and having teenagers on their arms. I've not experienced that. Usually they just dress like the women, but with shorter shoes. The slackabouts at Van Art are fond of oh, useless, right. useless shit like that. <laughs> Van Art. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I thought we were talking about everybody else. About real about real people? No. About we're real just talking mages. about mages. No, no. 
There's a reason Best why glorified attorneys, right? No, there's a, there's a reason <laughs> why I don't uh, take those potions uh, so often. The anti-aging potions. It's not a great lot in life to look twenty forever. Well, be careful. They might think you're Nilfgaardian. guardian. Casper, <laughs> you tending to the fire, look up to see Yanar, uh, the grandma, uh, out the window. She's she kind of taps for, on the window and startled. waves a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> on the window. <laughs> yeah. She kind of waves. And... <laughs> All right, back back up. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> you got to get on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Like I noticed her standing there as a little oh bit god, she's funny. Gone. Casper just like looks over and just like <laughs> Alright, let's what's what's our game plan today? I'm gonna uh, go to whoever you need to get answers from first and get answers from them. I'm going to go investigate the scene of the crime again. We That's need answers idea. about the missing food. Missing food to deliveries. Maybe if we pry yes. there, we'll get information about the un- unknowing to get information about the. So curse. that first, then the werewolf thing. I. Assume... Why are we assuming werewolf? I was assuming Leopluridon, and no one corrected me. You're only I... correcting is... on werewolf. What's a Leopluridon? Not... Right. So there's this lock in. Uh, uh, you ever been to Loch Muin? <laughs> what country is that in? Oh fuck me. Loch Muin is in uh, Edern. I've been, yes, I've been. I've spent quite a bit of time in Edern. Uh, don't, no, hold on. Don't Should be in Skellige. Uh, Nerd alert. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Are we calling the people who are currently recording a Witcher fucking live <laughs> play? <laughs> uh, n- nerds, pot and kettle ass. Didn't did not exclude myself from this. I do not exclude myself from this narrative. I, know, I just wanted to. I just wanted to make a joke. <laughs> I, just I'm not, I am not. I am funny. not erasing myself from the from this narrative. Please just let me be funny. Please just tell me where Why Lockmane is. There a sock is. over here. What the hell? Uh, I'm uh, gonna go okay. investigate the cabin. Uh, Casper's also gonna say, I assume that the the halting of food production is because they lost all of their workers due to the monster. Possibly so. Well, I'll go with Kilton and we'll talk to Granny. Right. Uh, right. We shouldn't call her Granny. We, she has a name. Yes, but she's outside. <laughs> Do you remember so it? Look at her token. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, God. Uh, it starts with a Y. I know that. <laughs> Afaya is going to go investigate the area and look for some herbs as well. So, all right, Kilton, we're together. All right, what was the grandma's name again? Sorry, yep. uh, it's Yanar. Y- yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Yanar. Something else. Perfect. Yonar. Yonar. Right. Well, bye. Yonar. Yonar, where are you? There you are. I'll give the the kid like a as friendly as I can muster fucking smile. Yeah, uh, Casper, as you exit and head out uh, through that section of the village, you see Henrik is up and he is kind of showing Hilda how to chop firewood, split firewood. He's kind of, you know, supervising her so she doesn't hurt herself, but letting her wield a small hatchet to chop kindling. And you see Yanar is kind of unloading some ropes and goods from a cart. Seems to be leftover materials from the kind of migrant workers that would normally be here during this time of the year that are, have left. 